please welcome Donnit Rice Hughes. Thank you, everybody. It's great to be here. Is my mic on? Okay, so there we go. All right, I have got a lot to cover in 20 minutes. So I've got my little watch here. And I'm going to kind of zoom through this and hope what we can't spend too much time on, we'll have some time in the Q&A. Um, so like you heard, I've been uh, involved in this since 1994. That was before the World Wide Web and email. We saw the beginnings of hardcore pornography, uh, child pornography, sexual predators and pedophiles using the pre-internet. And so we got involved and actually launched the internet safety movement in 1995. So we're going to go, oh, here's my slide thing, okay. This next slide is the perfect storm. This is what's been going on all this time. There's a perfect storm online, and we know what a perfect storm is, right? So first of all, kid, the two early adopters of the internet were children and criminals, okay? Bottom line. The driver of the internet early on was pornography and child pornography, right? So here's what we've got. Kids online, now kids are going online two to three years old. How? Using their parents' smartphones and laptops. Most of them don't even have uh, protection on them, what we call parental control tools. Uh, kids have anywhere access, like you heard. So this, this is new, actually, with mobile technology. So it's anytime, anywhere. On the right side of the screen, who are some of the bad guys? There are a lot of them, but I'm just going to cover a few. In fact, I'm covering all of the sexual exploitation um, on, online, not just pornography. So there's pornography. I'm going to give you a description of that legally in just a minute. There's child pornography. This content, we're the number two leaders in the world on this. We used to be number one until the Netherlands took number one last year. So we're the problem. We're the number one producers and distributors and exporters of hardcore illegal pornography. Um, sexual predators use the internet to contact kids. They've never before the internet came along had the ability to anonymously prey and groom on children as young as the kids are online, all right? They're manipulative, manipulative. They don't say, hi, you know, I'm a sex offender and I've abused 200 kids in my lifetime, want to have sex. No. They go, hey, you know, you look great and green. It matches your green eyes. And I love the fact that you play soccer. In fact, I play soccer. Here's a picture of me. And they send a picture of a great looking kid that's not them, right? So they use the internet to groom children. They also validate each other's sexual desire and appetite for children. So this has never happened before. You didn't have pedophile clubs before the internet. Now you've got them all over the internet. They also have free and easy access to all, all the child pornography that's available. The internet allowed that to happen. Um, as far as child pornography, the trend is much younger. Infant and toddler porn is the trend. Last year, I was, I've been in a lot of DOJ summits recently and was just at the White House yesterday for the um, Human Trafficking Summit, uh, which was very exciting. So we're doing a lot. This administration is front and center, the most aggressive on this issue that I have ever seen in my 25 years. So thank you, thank you, President Trump. Um, but, but I can say a lot about what's happening online. Uh, predators can actually virtually abuse a child while predators all over the world are watching in real time. So this, you know, this horrific behavior is happening. Sex trafficking, the same thing. Sex traffickers are just another form of predators. In the United States, trafficking is the number one growing criminal enterprise, and it's like number two behind drugs worldwide. So we've got a serious issue here because all the bad guys on the right side are targeting the kids over here, and they're very, very um, clever at what they're doing. In the middle, we have overwhelmed and often ill-equipped parents, right, trying to keep up with all this stuff and oftentimes thinking somebody else's kid or grandkid, but not mine, all right? Then we've got the problem with unenforced laws 
and overwhelmed law enforcement. At the, um, the summit we just had at the, not, the one at DOJ a few weeks ago, 45 million pictures were reported last year by tech companies. That was double the amount of child pornography that was reported the year before. The New York Times did a great expose on this. And um, law enforcement said, we are at a breaking point. We do not have the time to prosecute even the child pornography that we know about. So we're only focused on the infant and the toddler and not the 12, 13, and 14 year old kids. So that's where we are. All right. So. What is pornography? That question was just asked. Real quick, I can spend one hour just on this slide, all right? Um, harmful to minors content, that is, that is what requires print porn, like Playboy Hustler Penthouse, to be segregated away from kids in, in, in a convenience store. That's protected speech for adults, but not for kids. When twice, and I was involved in each piece of legislation, we, we got laws passed, bipartisan, this is a bipartisan issue, yay, one of the few, and um, to segregate pornography on the internet from children. Signed, passed into law both times, went to the Supreme Court and was struck down or not upheld. So we have no safety net like we do in print and broadcast. The second kind of, of content is what we call obscenity. This is hardcore graphic content. This is now mainstream. This is the majority of porn that is online. And guess what? Is it protected speech for children? No. Is it protected speech for adults? No. It's not even protected speech for adults, and yet this is the majority of what is there. So it's graphic sex acts and then all the deviant stuff like anal sex, that's one of the top categories of content that kids are looking at. Incest is the fastest growing trend. You heard about the violent content. And when kids see this, it can never be erased from their mind. And they're oftentimes acting out what they see because that's what kids do. The third type is child porn. We call it child sex abuse images. This is always illegal and I've already said a, enough about that. All right. Next, I'm going to get to predators, but the main thing is, I want you all to say this with me, where kids play, predators prey. Okay, ready? Where kids play, predators prey, including your kids and your grandkids. All right, this is a big slide. Uh, Donna Hearn, thank you for asking me to come, by the way. Um, Social media apps in gaming, where kids play, predators prey. Where are kids? Online. And social media apps in gaming have created even new issues that we didn't have in the beginning. All right, I'm just going to say one thing about gaming. Gaming is a predator's dream come true because with gaming technology, unlike just surfing in chat rooms, the predator is playing a game with a child. They always disguise themselves, by the way. Here's another thing I want you to learn. You can't recognize a disguised predator. Okay, say that. You cannot recognize a disguised predator. So your kid can't recognize a disguised predator, right? Okay, so when you're playing a game, a kid's playing a game, they're playing a game, so they're having fun, right? You have audio technology, so they're talking to each other, You've got webcams, so you're seeing each other, so all the senses are involved. I have had more parents, I had a parent call me, I don't know, it was 15 years ago and said, Donna, you know, we found out my 10 year old was looking at porn, so we took the computer away and I said, well, what's he doing? What kind of technology is he using? Oh, his Xbox. I'm like, okay, guess what? That is a mini computer. You've got to use the same controls on those gaming devices that you do on your laptop. Okay, got to go really fast here. Also, pornography is often embedded in the games, and there's no age verification on any of these apps. So let's just take uh, any kind of social media. 
the, the age limitation is 13 years old, but all a kid has to do is lie about their age and they're on. And this is, this is a big problem. When social media started, age was 17 to 18. They lowered it to 13, and we fought them really hard when they wanted to lower it, I think it was to eight or nine years old. We're like, this was developed for college kids, and this is where we are right now. So this is just a little fact we just found. 40% of kids in fourth and eighth grades said that they have been in contact with a stranger online. This just came out. So you can just look at the data points. All right, so kids themselves, when I say kids are online, they are actually unbeknownst to them because they're trusting putting themselves at risk by giving out personal information. Okay, this is just a little connection. Uh, Becky talked on this just a little bit, but there's a supply and demand piece of this. Um, I can't get into all the details right here, but let me just say something about pornography and child pornography. They're, they're cross-marketed on these porn hubs. So I have had talked to more men that got arrested for possession of child pornography that started with obscene or adult pornography. And then they saw pictures of barely legal girls that were 18, but they, are, they look like they're 12. And they got their, they wet their appetite for younger girls, all right? And then they end up in child pornography. That's just one piece of this. Um, I already talked a little bit about child sex abuse, um, supply and demand. Pornography is one of the biggest fueling factors for sex trafficking as well as child pornography. So it all works together. There's a supply and demand piece of this. And I keep telling the Department of Justice and people in leader, leadership, trying to end sex trafficking and the child porn pandemic without enforcing the obscenity laws, which haven't been enforced, is like trying to stop water pollution without holding businesses accountable that are dumping toxic waste into our water supply. It's ridiculous. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's happening here with law enforcement. Where's my clicker? All right. Oh, this is just a little off, one off, but I just want to bring it up because it was a huge campaign we started a number of years ago. This one just really got my goat. I'm used to fighting the really hard stuff, the child porn, sexual predators, you know, traffic kids and everything else. <laughs> but we got wind that the daughter magazine of Vogue, one of my favorites, um, had a, a guide for anal sex online. Anal sex 101, teaching kids, urging them to try anal sex. It was give anal a try. And they, they showed pictures of male genitals and female genitals, and they described the males as, non, as prostate owners and, and the women as non-prostate owners. It was run by an LBGT activist, can you say that right? And um, just for, it's still online. So we started this campaign, got 45,000 petitions right away. And the main thing, because we deal with internet information, most parents, I mean, they're, they're, they're gonna block, hopefully, the pornography and everything else, because we teach them how to do that. But you wouldn't think the Teen Vogue. Who, who would have thunk? They've got more trash on their site, so make sure it's blocked. And we still, st oh, we've still got this going. Guess what they did on Christmas this year? Teen Vogue. They relaunched the anal sex guide on, on a Christmas tweet, on Christmas Day, all right? This is how obnoxious these people are. All right, so what are we doing about it? We call it a three-pronged approach. There's a, the public has a role, the public meaning teachers, parents, anybody at the public level. Um, corporate America needs to do more. We're working on that. We've been working on that for 25 years. And the legal community, I'm going to start with the legal community, hopefully, if I can get there. Okay, so the priority has been, for all the years I've been doing this, to, to, because it's been so overwhelming, to, to focus law enforcement dollars on sexual predation, trafficking, and child pornography. And we can't even get to all of that right now. And under John Ashcroft, under Bush, he was the first attorney general to actually prosecute the obscenity laws. And remember, remember what I told you about that? Is that protected speech? 
No, it's not. It's illegal, even for adults. But because it's not been prosecuted since Ashcroft, and even not, not very long then because 9-11 happened and they, you know, were focusing on terrorism, um, hasn't been touched. Obama literally asked DOJ prosecutors to stop prosecuting obscene pornography. So since that time, we've had no prosecution, and that has become mainstream. And I'm talking bestiality, all of it. It's, it's awful. Um, so so when, during the, the election, the last election, came up with the idea, hey, let's get the next president to commit to, to enforce all the laws on the books to protect kids in the digital world, right? Novel idea. So, um, so we did. And we wrote this pledge. It's on our website. Trump signed it within two weeks. Hillary Clinton sent a letter of support. She didn't initially sign it. She said, we don't sign pledges. So we wrote a press release and say, oh, by the way, Hillary Clinton didn't sign it. Her campaign manager called me two days later and said, we're going to sign it. So anyway, that's how you work the media in your favor. Um, so, but still today, we still haven't gotten the obscenity laws enforced by this president. Um, and we're working on that right now. I just talked to A.G. Barr yesterday. I said, we have got to get this done because we don't want this to be the only promise and pledge that, that he's made that has not been done. And we cannot solve the whole problem of sexual exploitation without getting these laws enforced. So I've been talking to Congress about new money and new dollars so that law enforcement can actually focus on this. We have also uh, uh, created a governor's internet safety pledge. The governor of South Carolina is leading this, Henry McMaster, and we're asking all the governors to sign a similar pledge, all right? And this isn't just existing laws, but new policy, new dollars, and to make the protection of children in the digital world a top priority. So what can you do? The pledge is on our website. If you have a relationship with your governor, and this is something that would be great for Eagle Forum, by the way, um, let them know about this. Get them to sign it. It's bipartisan. We have the state attorney's general pledge. Same thing. Chief law enforcement officers of each state to sign on to this. We have like 15 so far. So, and you can find that on our website, and I'm going to take you there in just a minute. All right, one of the things we're doing right now with corporate America is the Safe Wi-Fi initiative. Have you heard of that? Okay. Well, after we've taught parents how to protect their kids, to put parental control tools on every internet-enabled device, et cetera, et cetera, they can walk out and hop into a Wi-Fi network at any restaurant, in any hotel lobby, at any stadium, in any mall, and they oftentimes have complete open access to get anything they want. So we went to McDonald's and Starbucks and said, hey, you're filtering your Wi-Fi, you're, you're filtering child pornography and obscene pornography on your Wi-Fi in the United Kingdom. Lead the effort here with us. Well, McDonald's joined in, Starbucks ignored us. We sent 45,000 petitions. And eventually, after six years, we got Starbucks to agree. So now both these corporate giants are filtering their Wi-Fi in every company-owned um, store in America. So what are we after next? We're after hotels, resorts, retailers, the travel industry, entertainment venues, all the rest of the, um, of, of, of the restaurants, etc. The kids at Notre Dame got wind of this and said, hey, we don't want porn on our campus. So they petitioned the president of Notre Dame Catholic University and said, would you filter, just like McDonald's and Starbucks, hello? And they said no. So we got behind that little campaign, and we're still working on it. They still don't want to do it, but in the meantime, other universities have decided to filter. So we have a national college safe Wi-Fi program to get these universities to voluntarily filter illegal content. And you can join that effort. The Internet Safety 101 program, um, we created the workbook. We gave you a free copy. Does anybody have one with you? Yay, good, good, good. Okay, we wrote this in 2008, but the fundamentals are still the same. The pornographers still operate the same way. They're seeking out kids to get them hooked at a young age so they have an ongoing consumer for life. The predators still operate the same way. Everything still operates the same way. The only difference is that the stats are worse. So this is a great primer for you. Um, I hope you will use it, and when we get to our Q&A, I can take you through that just a little bit more. 
But the main thing on safety, we don't ordinarily recommend one technology over the other because oftentimes your kid's smartphone might have a different um, set of parental control tools than the Xbox or something else. So we first recommend that you look at the free tools that are available, the parental control tools. But the bottom line you need to realize is rules and tools. And the rules are the common sense measures you as a parent or grandparent need to take to protect your kids on every single internet enabled device. And I always tell parents, if you're not willing to supervise that advice, and to implement rules and tools on that device, then don't get it for your child, okay? Because they're gonna be sitting ducks for all the bad stuff that's out there and all the, all the bad people, all right? As far as the tools go, are you ready for me to sit down? Okay, the key things on tools are you wanna implement filtering, which is very different from monitoring. I describe it in this book here, the workbook. Filtering and monitoring tools and time controls. That technology is your best friend to protect your children. So the rules are the non-technical measures and the tools are the technical measures. So that, that's uh, front and center. I'm sorry, one more thing. Let me see what's next. Okay, I, I can go through this when I sit down. Can I just go through this? Okay. This is a spiritual battle, so just don't forget this, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The most important thing you can do is pray. And if you have kids and grandkids, pray. Ask for discernment. Ask God to show you what's really going on. And keep lines of communication open with your kids. If they see something that, that, that or they're interacting with a predator, you want to be the first person that they come to and you don't freak out, okay? Um, sign up for our weekly updates. You can go right now to internetsafety101.org while I go sit down and we start taking questions. You can sign up right there and every week we'll keep you updated with, with what's happening. Implement safety, sign our petitions. We've got stuff going on all the time. Get your governors and AGs involved. Um, and we'll talk about um, this resource website where all the resources that Becky shared, including hundreds and hundreds of more, are already in a clearinghouse on our website. Thank you.